Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video set. My name is Jason Gregerson and this video is going to talk about section 10.2 on the calculus of parametric equations. So specifically we want to talk about if we're getting a set of parametric equations can we do the following things? Can we calculate dy dx? Can we calculate the second derivative of y with respect to x? Can we calculate the tangent line to the curve? Can we find the length of a parametric curve? and also the surface area of it if we rotate it about an axis. So these are some of the same ideas we've looked at in the past for Cartesian functions, y equals f of x, but now the question is can we do this if we're given our curve described parametrically as a set of parametric equations. So we have these four big goals. This video is going to address the first goal of calculating dy dx and the second derivative of y with respect to x. Alright, so consider the curve x equals 2t squared and y equals t cubed minus t for t between negative 1 and 1. So we have this, the curve described parametrically. And what I want to do is calculate the slope at different points along my curve. Now the slope is going to be dy dx. Now I have my y and x both as functions of t. So I need to get an expression for this just in terms of t. So how can I do this? Well, when I write dy dx like this, kind of implied in there is that y is a function of x. If I think of y as a function of x, and x as a function of t, then I could look at dy dt. And really I'm taking the derivative of a composition of functions, y of x of t. Now to do that, I'd use the chain rule. So the definition of the chain rule tells me that dy dt in this case would be the derivative of my outside function, times the derivative of my inside function, that dx dt. So I have this expression from applying the chain rule. But once I write this out, I see the piece that I want. I want to get dy dx here. And so what I can do is rewrite, or solve this for dy dx. So I'll just divide this by the derivative of x respect to t. And I'm going to use some new notation here. I'm going to write this as y dot, which is some engineering notation that means the derivative of y with respect to t. I'm dividing that by x dot, which is the derivative of x with respect to t. And so this is a formula for dy dx, the slope along the curve. And so I can calculate these values. I have my y expression here. So the derivative of y with respect to t is going to be 3t squared minus 1. Do the same thing with x of t. The derivative of that is going to be 4t. And so now I've calculated dy dx coming from this set of parametric equations. And of course I can evaluate it just like I would any other derivative here. Now I can say what is, for instance, the derivative, the slope along the curve at t equals 1, for instance. Well, if I plug in that value of t equals 1, I'll get 3 times 1 squared, which is 3, minus 1 is 2. And I'll get 4 times 1 of the denominator, which is a value of 4. And so I'll get my value of 1 half here. And now I want to see if that value makes sense. And it's very common at this point for students to, to look at this value and say, oh, well, what is the slope at t equals 1? But that's a big misconception because what I'm circling there is where x equals 1, not where t equals 1. So what I have to do is figure out the direction of motion along this curve as well as where I'm actually at at t equals 1. Now I can see my position at t equals 1 by just plugging that into my x of t and y of t. So it looks like when t equals 1 I'm at the point 2 comma 0 just by plugging the value t equals 1 into my set of parametric equations. So I'm over here. But it looks like I go to that point twice. So which direction am I traveling along the curve here? And so to check that what I can do is put in some different values at t. For instance at t equals 0 I would be at the point looks like 0, 0. So I'd be over here. At t equals 1 half, for instance, this might be a little more complicated, but I would be at, well, 1 half squared is 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. And when I plug this into my y value, I'll get 1 eighth minus 1 half negative 3 eighths. So if I go to 1 half down negative 3 eighths, it looks like I'm down here. So it looks like I'm traveling along the curve in this direction. And as I get to this point, if I kind of sketch myself a little tangent line, it seems reasonable the slope there could be 1 half. So I've calculated dy dx. Now what if I want to take this the next step and calculate what 
the second derivative of y and with respect to x is. <clears throat> the thing to remember here is this is just the derivative of the first derivative, which I'm going to write as y, y prime here. So it's the derivative of the first derivative. Well, what happened when I took the derivative of y? When I took the derivative of y, I took the y piece, I took the derivative of that thing with respect to t is my numerator, and I divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. And that's basically what I'm going to get here as well. Over here, I'm going to get that derivative of x with respect to t in the denominator, but in the numerator, I'm going to get the derivative with respect to t of y prime here, which of course I already have as a function of t. So, how do I actually calculate this? Well, that denominator is just 4t like it was before. It's just the derivative of x with respect to t. But the numerator now is the derivative of y prime, that piece. So I'm going to write the derivative with respect to t of that piece. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to break that into two fractions. So the first piece is going to give me 3 fourths t. And the next piece is going to give me 1 fourth 1 over t. So now as I calculate the derivative in that numerator, I'll get the derivative of this first piece, which is just going to be 3 fourths. I'll get the derivative of the second piece, which will be negative 1 fourth. And the derivative of t to the negative 1 is negative 1, t to the negative 2. So now I can just clean this up a little bit. 3 fourths plus 1 over 4t squared all over 4t. And I can simplify that to be 3 over 16t plus 1 over 16t cubed. And so this should be my bad value for the second derivative of the y with respect to x. All right, and the last thing to point out is that we can still use both these pieces to answer all the same questions we did from calculus 1. So for instance, if I want to say, well, where along this curve is the slope equal to 0, I would just look at my expression for the slope here and say, well, where is that equal to 0? Well, that's equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. And so I'd be setting 3t squared minus 1 equal to 0. So it looks like when t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. And so those would be the values or the locations. When I plug in t, I can get the points, which will probably be up here and down here, where my tangent line is horizontal. I could also say, well, where do I might have a vertical a tangent line? Where's my slope tend towards infinity? Well, there I can say oh, the denominator is zero. So it looks like at t equals zero, I would have an infinite slope. Same thing with the second derivative. That's going to talk about the concavity of the curve. So where that second derivative is positive, my curve will be concave up. And where it's negative, I'll be concave down. And it looks like when I plug in positive t values into my second derivative, I'll get positive values. Therefore, when t is greater than 0, it looks like I'm concave up. Conversely, if I plug in negative values for t, I will get negative values for the second derivative. So it looks like for t less than 0, my curve is concave down. All right, so we've started with some parametric equations. We've learned how to calculate dy dx and the second derivative of y with respect to dx. Now I'll go ahead and try some of the problems. Thanks for your time.